So it's a massive compression of real world data. I feel very confident in predicting autonomous robo taxis for Tesla next year. There's three steps to self-driving. There's being future complete, then there's being future complete to the degree that where we think that the person in the car does not need to two are focused on self-driving. So what is drivable space and what is not drivable space? And GPS maps and lanes are a really bad idea. We have a forward radar. And then we also have ultra, 12 ultrasonics for near field information, in addition to the eight cameras and the, the forward radar. You only need the radar in the forward direction because that's the only direction you're going real fast. So we've gone over this multiple times. Are we sure we have the right sensor suite? Should we add anything more? No. We have 425,000 cars with hardware two and beyond, which is means they've got all eight cameras, the right, the radar and the ultrasonics. And they've got at least a video computer, which is enough to essentially figure out what information is important, what is not compress the information that is important to the most salient elements and upload it to the network for training. So it's a massive compression of real world data. I suppose it could possibly be used for something besides self-driving. We've been too focused on self-driving. So as we get that really nailed, maybe there's going to be some other use for millions and then tens of millions of computers with hardware three or full self-driving computer. Yeah, maybe there would be. It could be maybe there's some sort of aid angle here. It's possible. There are a number of important signals as Andrew was saying. Lane lines are one of those things, but one of the most important signals is drive space. So what is drivable space and what is not drivable space? And what actually really matters the most is drivable space more than lane lines. And the prediction of drivable space is extremely good. And I think especially after this upcoming winter will be incredible. It'll, it's, it's, it will be like, how could it possibly be that good? That's crazy. It's been extremely important that things not be rigidly tied to GPS because GPS error can vary quite a bit. And and the, the, the actual situation for a road can vary quite a bit. So the, the reconstruction, there could be a detour. And if the car is using GPS as primary, this is a real bad situation. It's asking for trouble. It's, it's fine to use GPS for like tips and tricks. So it's, you can drive your home neighborhood better than a neighborhood in some other country or some other part of the country. So you know your own neighborhood well, and you, you use like the knowledge of your neighborhood to drive with more confidence to maybe have counterintuitive shortcuts and that kind of thing. But it, it, the GPS overlay data should only be helpful, but never primary. If it's ever primary, it's a problem. High precision GPS maps and lanes are a really bad idea. The, the system becomes extremely brittle. So a, a, any change, like this, this might, any change to the system makes it, it can't adapt. So if, if, if it, it locks onto GPS and high precision lane lines and does not allow a vision override. In fact, vision should be the thing that, that does everything. Ex and then like lane lines are a guideline, but they're not the, the main thing. We briefly balked up the tree of high precision lane lines and then realized that was a huge mistake and reversed it out. It's not good. There's three steps to self-driving. There's being feature complete. Then there's being feature complete to the degree that where we think that the person in the car does not need person in the car does not need to pay attention. And then there's being at a reliability level where we've also convinced regulators that is true. Okay, we're going to record full self-driving 12.3.4 from here to the ways. Here, hold the... So it's got like, there's three levels. We expect to be set feature complete in self-driving this year, and we expect to be confident enough from our standpoint to say that w we think people do not need to touch the wheel, look out of the window sometime probably around, I don't know, second quarter of next year. And then we start to expect to get regulatory approval, at least in some jurisdictions, for that towards the end of next year. That's a roughly the timeline that I, that I expect things to go on. And probably for trucks, the tuning will be approved by regulators before. Unfortunately, car accidents are a leading cause of death worldwide. Here's what the World Health Organization WHO says. Globally, approximately 1.35 million people die each year in road traffic accidents. That's why I need this technology. Not only Tesla, but also other uh, other players in the market. Or anything else. And you could have maybe, if you're a uh, long haul, doing long haul freight, you could have one driver in the front and then have four semis trailing behind in a platooning manner. And I think that probably the regulators will be quicker to approve that than other things. If to, in order to have a self-driving car or robo taxi, you really need redundancy throughout the vehicle at the hardware level. Starting in, it was October 2016. All cars made by Tesla have redundant power steering. So we have redundant motors on the power steering. So any one failure of the, if, if the motor fails, the car can still steer. All of the 
power and data lines have redundancy. So you can sever any given power line or any data line and the call will keep driving. The auxiliary power system, even if the main pack, you lose complete power in the main pack, the car is capable of steering and braking by using the auxiliary power system. So you can completely lose the main pack and the car is safe. Um, the whole system, from a hardware standpoint, has been designed to, for, to be a robo-taxi since basically October 2016. So when we rolled out hardware, uh, Autopilot version 2. But we, we do not expect to upgrade cars made before that. We think it would actually cost more to make a new car than to upgrade the cars. Just to give you a sense of how hard it is to do this. Unless it's designed in, it's not worth it. So we've gone through the future of self-driving, where it's clear it's hardware, it's vision, and then there's a lot of software. And there's the software problem here should not be minimized. It's a massive software problem that, yeah, managing vast amounts of data, training against the data, how do you control the car based on the vision? It's a very difficult software problem. So going after, going over just like Tesla, Tesla master plan, obviously we've made a bunch of forward-looking statements, as they call it. Um, and, but let's go through some of our other forward-looking statements that we've made. You know, way back when we created the company, we said we'd build the Tesla Roadster. They said it was impossible, and that even if we did build it, nobody would buy it. It was like universal opinion was that building an electric car was extremely dumb and would fail. I agree with them that probability of failure was high, but, but that this was important. So we built the Tesla Roads, going into production in 2008 and shipping that car. It's now a collector's item. Then we built a more affordable car with the, the Model S. We did that. Again, we were told that's impossible. I was called a fraud and a liar. And it was not going to happen. This is all untrue. Okay, famous last words. Now, is we, we went into production with the Model S in 2012, it exceeded all expectations. There is still, in 2019, no car that can compete with the Model S of 2012. It's seven years later. We're waiting. So we'd build a, a, an affordable car, maybe highly affordable, it's affordable, more affordable, with the Model 3. We built the Model 3, we're in production, so we'd get over 5,000 cars a week for Model 3. At this point, 5,000 cars a week is a walk in the park for us, it's not even hard. So we do large-scale solar, which we did through the Solar City acquisition, and that we develop and deploy the solar roof, which is going really well. We're now on version 3 of the solar tile roof, and we expect to spill up production of the solar tile roof significantly later this year. I, I have it on, on, on my house, and it's great. And I, I, I make the power wall and the power pack, and we made the power wall and power pack. In fact, the, the power pack is now deployed in massive grid-scale utility systems around the world, in, including the largest operating battery projects in the world that at above 100 megawatts. And in the next, or probably by next, in the next year, two years at the most, we expect to have a giga, gigawatt-scale battery project completed. So all these things, I said we would do them, we did it. So we would do it, we did it. We're going to do the robo-taxi thing too. Only criticism, and it's a fair one, and sometimes I'm not on time, but I get it done. And the Tesla team gets it done. So what we're going to do this year is we're going to reach combined production of 10,000 a week between SX and 3. Feel very confident about that. And we feel very confident about being feature complete with self-driving. Next year, we'll expand the product line with Model Y and Semi, and we expect to have the first operating robo-taxis next year with no one in them next year. It's always difficult to, like when things are on an exponential, at, at an exponential rate of improvement, it's very difficult to wrap one's mind around it because we're used to extrapolating on a linear basis. But when you've got massive amounts of, as the hardware, massive amounts of hardware on the road, the cumulative data is increasing exponentially. Software is getting better at an exponential rate. I feel very confident in predicting autonomous rover taxis for Tesla next year. So how's he gonna deal with it? Now this is this is tricky because it's supposed to go straight, but this lane is to make a left. So let me see how it deals with it now. I'm gonna have to take over. And I had to take over. Didn't make it all the way. That was tricky. Still not 100%, but hey, almost there. The All heck right. was that? What? The heck was that? Yeah, that was scary. Cause it was in the wrong lane. All right, you can press stop and we are here. Peace.